Hey Christmasers, I'm Tina Loves Christmas and this is my favorite format to do pretty much anything. I'm gonna pretend it's alive. I'm gonna pretend it's alive. I, it was requested I decorate a flock Christmas tree for you. This beauty is on its way out to Las Vegas tomorrow, so I thought, well, this is the perfect time to do it. I'm gonna start with my tree topper. Going in first with pigs, I have three different textures for, uh, just kidding, I have four different textures for my pigs. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a little topper. Um, there's wire in the top of the tree, there's all sorts of good stuff, and that's gonna hold it all in place. Uh, the top of the tree should feel organic. It shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be perfect. It should be just like a little, like a little quaff. That's what it should feel like. It should feel like a little hairstyle. A little hairstyle for the top of your Christmas tree. And I'm just gonna get some added texture in there and that's gonna give me, well, pretty much the personality I want. Oh, I already like it. I already like it. I already like it. I'm gonna put a few in going down, adding these in. Uh, somebody messaged me the other day and she said, I think I'm thinking too much when I decorate my Christmas tree because I, I just stop and I get frustrated. And if you're stopping and you're frustrated, you're definitely thinking too much. I realize that my brain works a million miles per hour all day long, but when I'm decorating a Christmas tree, I, I don't usually think about anything else but my tree. So, <laughs> there's a pro tip. <laughs> uh, cut, cut, cut your picks off. If they're too long, go ahead and cut them off when you're popping them in so you don't have too long of a stem. It's so pretty. So I've got this champagne color going, and then this is also a champagne. One is like a true champagne. <laughs> I'm gonna mess that up badly. And then this is like more of a, like a blanc champagne. It's a little more silvery. But this is a really pretty little texture, this little starburst texture. I can already tell this tree is gonna be gorgeous. I'm gonna throw in a few more of my larger picks going down. If you can tell, I'm creating a pattern. So I've already got one, two, three. I'm just gonna keep going down in my pattern shape before I continue, so that when I throw in my ornaments, I don't <laughs> mess up my pattern. I'm gonna keep going down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it just like that. So now I'm gonna go with my biggest ornaments. These are beautiful. These have a little bit of a pleated pattern. Uh, just kidding, they're tufted. It's a little bit of a tufted pattern and they're shiny with a little bit of glitter. These are gorgeous. So where are these going? These are somewhat large for such a small tree. This tree is six and a half feet. So I'm gonna go in in my first sign of a hole. So this is my first sign. That's where I'm gonna go in. And I'm going into the heart of the Christmas tree. I want this ornament all the way in. If it's sitting out too far, that's gonna be awkward. And the heart of the tree, that one doesn't, that one doesn't have any, that one didn't have any more. So I'm gonna go in in the heart of my Christmas tree. And the heart of my tree, I'm gonna take that wire and I'm gonna wrap it around one time because this doesn't weigh hardly anything. So I'm gonna go in in the same way I did with those picks and I'm gonna create a pattern. And every time, let me reach out. Filling in the holes as I go. This one doesn't have wire. <laughs> Here, I'm just gonna give you that. It doesn't have any wire. No wire. My son, my son is 11. He wired these. Um, he didn't twist all the way. Well, this is real pretty. It's already filling up. Can you see it? Flock trees are so, flock trees are so easy to decorate. Even if you're not an experienced tree designer, anybody can make a flock tree look professional. You don't have to try too hard. Got it. <laughs> what if I didn't catch it? That would have been terrible. <laughs> Thank you, honey. As always, my husband calls right by my side. Going in next with my, also a large ornament. These are just a solid glitter champagne. Very pretty, very reflective. And I'm gonna continue to go in with the pattern. So I'm gonna start this one a little bit lower and keep working my way down. And that's why you don't really have to think about it because if you're making a pattern, 
All you have to think about is the patterning. The patterning, you don't have to think about, oh, where's it going next? Uh, now you see that. You don't even look like you're uh, thinking, why is it so fast? Because I'm, I'm not thinking about it at all. And you don't have to either. So already I've created this beautiful little pattern. I'm gonna pop this one back here because, um, well, yes, we do decorate, <laughs> decorate the back of our tree. We always decorate the back of our tree because God can see it. And if I come to your house, I'm going to look and I'll be able to see it too. And well, it's one reason to decorate the back of your Christmas tree. That's one reason. Okay, I'm gonna go in next with some color. So normally I would continue to go in with my largest ornaments, but I'm gonna go in with what I think is the most special next. I have 18 of this color for this tree, front and back. I'm gonna put 12 in now. Okay, last one will go in here. I'm going in now with this gold, also those bubblegum ornaments. So Kyle said I'm not allowed to step beyond here, so so pretty. And I'm gonna go in and keep creating a little pretty pattern. This particular ornament for this tree, I have nine of. Nine. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Find my first hole. All of these particular ornaments right now are dancing on the branch. None of them are dripping off. It's a personal preference. There's no right or wrong. It's wherever it feels good to you. But already I think you can see, eh, um, <laughs> it's shaping up to be a really pretty tree. I cannot, I cannot, I could not wait to install this tree. I had to do it for you before I left town. I think that's kind of funny. But the request was so perfect, I was like, well, sure, I can do that for you, no problem. Extra no problem, because I have one literally ready to go. Oh, hi. These are pearl, true pearl because there's that opalescent color on them. They're so pretty. Gorgeous. Putting them in right into the heart, letting them dance on the branch, letting them be very visible. Next, I'm going in with these gorgeous beauties. These are Sullivan's product. I'm so concerned about my mark. <laughs> these are Sullivan's product. I renamed them the Gina Loves Christmas. They are my favorite. They bring in some texture that I needed. I just always need texture. It's why I continue to cut. It's why I continue to cut my own hair. I have eight of these for this tree. I'm giving you the quantity so you can kind of feel out what you may need to do your own tree. It's okay if when your glass ornaments meet, they talk a little. Last one, we'll come in right over here. Next I'm going in, this is a little bit gray, but it's got that translucent, opalescent look to it, and I really, uh, just it's just one more texture. And while the bubble gums are fun and pretty, I, again, need texture. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going in with the texture. And I have to say, the texture makes a very big difference to me. Choosing your ornament selection um, well, that's pretty much just as important as the way you apply the ornaments. These are special. These little buttes, very special. These are, somebody asked today, a Christmas or a Christmas or asked me today, she's like, what are you doing with all those glass ornaments? Are you doing a little DIY? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I put them on the tree. These are those little cheap and cheerful glass ornaments. And I, I always fill in my flock trees with them because they're so pretty. They also have that translucent, beautiful rainbow little quality and they just sparkle the light and they're cheap. So <laughs> when you buy fancy ornaments, hi bubble gums, when you buy the fancies and you just need to fill in your space, yeah, get the best thing you can get and then get the affordable things, the cheap and the cheerful. We do it together. We do it together. 
These I'm gonna let drip a little bit. As long as they're kissing the branch right above them, you're, you're in application, pretty good shape. Also, have these little babies, they're just like little bubbles. Always so pretty in a flock tree. As you can see, I'm doing some layering. So I have one in the back, I have some in the front, so I'm creating some dimension within the tree. Those branches in the front, they hold the small ornaments, especially the glass, the lightweight ones, they hold them really well. Just keep creating the texture. Keep layering, keep layering. Let's <laughs> pretend you're making one of those little seven layer dips, but it's your Christmas tree. I really love <laughs> oh, so pretty. Okay. Let me do a few more of these, and then I'm gonna go in last with what I call the frosting. Next, I'm gonna go in with what I like to call the frosting. These are just extra little sparkly pieces with a little bit of on them. <laughs> And I'm gonna tuck them anywhere where there appears to be a gap or a hole. Just as like, you're, no, one's, no one's moving your Christmas tree across the room. So you can just tuck them in and it's no problem. The little blancs, the little blancs. These are so pretty. I'm gonna trim these a little bit. I don't usually trim my picks until I'm actually using them so I know how long I need them to be. These I'm gonna let pop out like little firecrackers. Really pretty. It wasn't a perfect match, but it's like so perfect. Grab these for the back, uh, that texture. Remember when you're looking at the front of your tree from the side, you wanna make sure the back has the same texture. And if you don't wanna decorate the back of your tree, I understand, but at least dust it. At least make sure that they're, enough is decorated. The average eye wouldn't be like, mm, they didn't decorate their tree. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little love. Feels good. Not only for me, but for the Christmas tree. This was a little bit, this was a little bit more lavish and spent. But, I love picks, I love sparkle, and I love everything tucked in. And this is a garland, but I didn't need a garland. What I wanted was a pick that had the champagne tone and that blanc champagne tone. I wanted both. And the only way to get it was to buy this. And then I'm gonna commit a little bit of a Christmas crime, and I'm going to cut it up. And I'm gonna shove the pieces um, into my tree. But the problem is, is I had to have it and you're gonna see why. <laughs> Could you hear the angels singing? I could, okay. Had to have it. So pretty, oh my gosh, okay. Can you see that texture? It's so beautiful. I needed it, I needed it. It made the whole look come together. It did. Oh, it's gorgeous, okay. No, I, I'm like, did I regret that decision? No, I did not, absolutely not. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a quick cut. I just finished cutting them, and again, I still have no regrets. I'm gonna still go in and just pop these in and create basically all the extra glittered branches that I think that the tree wants. Because everything is butter. Everything is better with glitter. Everything is better with glitter. Yeah, everything is. I'm Gina Loves Christmas. For more tips, hang out with me on the daily on Instagram or just subscribe right here because well, there's a lot more of this magic coming your way. Thank you for Christmasing with me today.